It seems like wherever Ted is, the internet hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, as you guys know, Ted, as you guys know, Ted obviously lives I in an old museum. I didn't know this was his vibe. <laughs> T, T, I didn't, T, I didn't know this was your vibe, man. Hi, I'm Saya Rankin, Senior Editor of The Hollywood Reporter, and thank you so much for joining us for THR Presents' panel with Apple TV Plus's Shrinking. I'm here with Bill Lawrence, Brett Goldstein, Jason Siegel, Jessica Williams, Lakita Maxwell, Ted McGinley, Luke Tenney, and Michael Urie. And I wanted to ask what everyone's thoughts were on the literal cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we make jokes about that are so crazy um i want to see how these guys reacted because i'll tell you something brett and uh uh jason and i when we pitched the show we pitched this um really at the start even before we we wrote the pilot um and i wasn't sure how it would look when it was cut together but man it is a is a it is a solid kind of pull the rug out moment do you guys see the episode what do you think oh yeah uh, it, it made my wife it made my wife very concerned <laughs> when they were on the hike i get i get this physical energy shift from the couch just this <laughs> like bro come on bro for real. it shocked me i was so shocked and i was so glad it wasn't me <laughs> i thought for sure it was gonna be <laughs> I'll tell you the, the weird thing about streaming television, and, and these people are all probably better at it than I am, is you get to see fan reactions in real time. And the writers always give me crap because I'm prone to do spoilers and then afterwards say uh, spoiler. And they're like, you have to say spoiler before you say the spoiler. <laughs> but the point is, yeah, so the point is that on social media, when I see people going like, oh, there's got to be consequences to Jimmy's behavior. I'm like, can you wait a second? <laughs> it drives me crazy because you you as a writing staff you set these things up to pay off not only this year but next year and the third year and so you just want to tell people you know mm-hmm. hold you by the way someone the other day was like spoiler uh, hey neurologists aren't supposed to have sex with their patients i'm like really we didn't research that at all that's probably not an issue <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it makes me crazy all right sorry I'm back. <laughs> that, that does make me curious for i guess Brett, Jason, Bill, like, was this always, like, did you write this knowing that this was going to roll out one by one in like that kind of the version of old fashioned TV? And if so, did that go into, like, did that change at all how you write the show versus like knowing people would binge it all in one, all at once? You got, you got to do both because uh, um, um, Brett and I had experience with Apple that they said that we never really released more than two or three at first. And then if the show works, it goes one at a time and uh, the show's working and it's gonna go one at a time, but you have to both thread this weird needle of writing self-contained episodic thing, you know, shows that still hold up. Cause I'd still say in a great scenario, double the amount of people that watch the show week to week. Well now, as they hear about it and as the word of mouth makes it grow, jump in and watch the whole thing in like a couple of days. So it has to be both simultaneously. I'm going to move a lot like this because I'm the only one standing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that makes me... For um, actors here, I'm curious what, like, there's obviously a lot of reasons why an actor would want to say yes to being on a show. But for each of you, like, what was the number one thing that, like, pulled you in? Was it Jason? Like, was it the, were you a Ted Lasso fan? Was it the storyline? Like, what was everyone's like clincher? I would say, um, yeah. yeah, whoever wants to go. Well, I had done a sitcom for a long time, and How I Met Your Mother was nine years, and so in my head, that was something that I I just didn't want to do again. Not because I didn't have a great time, but it's just that it was a decade of my life, you know. Um, and and then I swung pretty hard and did a bunch of dramas after that show ended because I wanted to try my hand at that and see, you know, answer some questions for myself about what I could do and what I couldn't do. And then when this show came along uh, and and Bill and Brett pitched it to me, it really felt like the synthesis of everything that I had tried to like get good at from 
20 years of doing this job. There were um, set comedy pieces and pratfalls off of bicycles. And there were also scenes like that ripped your heart out with Lukita. And so for me, all of a sudden, it, in a weird way, like I felt like, oh, everything I've been trying to pull together makes sense with this show. It's like exactly what I think I might be really good doing. Anyone? You are. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you're, very, you're very good at that. Shit. It's weird that nobody has jumped in to say that they wanted to work with Bill Lawrence, but it's not a big deal. I mean, I I'm the know. only Bill. I'm the only one who's talked. I'm the <laughs> only one who's talked. So that means me. We mean me. I really wanted to work with Bill. The real <laughs> truth of it is, I've been kind of hopping from project to project, hoping someone knew Bill. I felt it. I felt it. Hey, if my my wife got COVID. I'll answer for Krista. I wanted the opportunity Aww. to work with my husband again. <laughs> well, you have to convince her. Like, did she, was she like, "Oh God, no, I don't, let's not work together again"? Like, no, we'll you know what is annoying? I'll let Brett answer because Brett and Krista had decided that she was going to do this long before I was told. Yeah, I was. I was always. I. Uh, I uh, am a Krista fan and sort of wrote the part for Krista, and Bill was just going to have to deal with it, and. Uh, <laughs> And also, I think she's fucking brilliant. Have you seen it? Yeah, she's so good. She's very good. And yeah. I also, I really liked giving giving her the chance to do something different. And, you know, I joke with her, but like, she seems like such a nice person in this show. And that is something <laughs> we've never seen. From her. <laughs> it's, it's really good. She's a really, really good actor. I think and by the great. way, I, I don't think Ted McGinley is on the internet as much as I am. Uh, but Ted, I am without a doubt leaning into the fact, whether it's true or not, that you're playing me because you are saying things that I've never had the courage to say to my wife. <laughs> well, I, that's very nice. I would, I would, uh, I wish I could get to your level. Yeah. yeah. But it seems exactly. like wherever Ted is, the internet hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, as you guys know, Ted, as you guys know, Ted obviously lives I in an old museum. I didn't know this was his vibe. T, T, I didn't, T, I didn't know this was your vibe, man. It's like, it's yeah. like a lot. And I don't have a vibe. I want to. I, I don't. Do I want to come hang in your parlor. Like, what what I was like, hey, are you guys cool if I do this Zoom from the Louvre? Yeah, I no. said I was going to be eating a large turkey leg while I was sitting. <laughs> you look like a professor with like tenor. You like had tenor. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is insane. Well, uh, I, I will. I will tell you that well, I've read a lot yeah. of half-hour scripts over the years, and I had never read anything this good. And I, the, the one thing, because I didn't, I, I didn't tell anybody really I was in the show because I didn't know if I was allowed to, but also. Uh, I, I didn't have very much to do and it felt sort of inconsequential. And so I didn't want people to tune in to see me and then not really see me. And, uh, but when I read it, I couldn't believe how great the script was. And the day we did the reading on stage, uh, I, I was blown away and I had tears, like real tears at the end of that. And I, and I thought I have never been a part of something so smart and so highbrow and so inclusive and at this point in my career to be a part of it in any way was, was such a blessing and and i've tried many times to work with bill and he threw me a bone graciously and uh, so i was so excited there were so many reasons to be on the show this cast is beyond anyone's expectations to get to work with them is a dream so like i feel like the luckiest guy in the world to be a part of it. I feel yeah, like that's yeah. the end of the Likewise, panel. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're done. Thanks that's for having us, guys. Everybody close, Thank their you. Laptops. Everybody close your laptop. Cheers. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. I'll go around the horn really quick, and these guys, because to me, it's such a treat to work with Ted. Just because somebody that comedically is just such a, a lightning rod, and it was so fun to try with Brett and for Brett and me to try to coerce him to doing this thing. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Debbie Romano and uh, Brett Benner, our casting directors, because they have been uh, telling me to put Michael Yuri in something for mm -hmm. years and years and years, and they would not take an over an answer, and he absolutely crushes. You know Jason's awesome. I love him. This is Guy Harrison Ford. 
Uh, I had dinner with him last night. He's super excited. He's cranky even and happy at the same time. It's what makes a lot of <laughs> But then the other thing I want to say is we all say too that this show would not work if we weren't able to find uh, a young actor and a young actress that can stand toe to toe with Harrison Ford and not be overwhelmed and do scenes mm -hmm. with all these uh, monsters and give back as good as they get. And uh, so we, you know, Brett and I often talk about how cool it is to when somebody says, oh, the shows, the cast is so good, even though you had nothing to do with it, you just go, hey, thank you, you know, and uh, everybody here is crushing it. That's the, the big win. I was curious, Luke, um, <laughs> maybe everyone else too, but um, for you, did you read, um, did you have like kind of the scope of the whole season when you signed on? Or were you just reading uh, the pilot script? Cause like your role gets like progressively more comedic as it, it goes on, right? But like maybe if you just read the pilot you'd be like, oh wow, this is a really, it could seem like maybe you have a really, really heavy dramatic lift. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you knew about the role uh, when you said yes. Yeah, I just got the pilot. I got the pilot, I read that joint a few times and I hit up my homie Esteban to help me tape. And I kind of felt this, I. I never really felt ha ha's kind of fall out of me reading oh. the script, but like the situations in that first episode were so comical just by themselves. And then the dialogue on top of it just really kind of made me laugh in a real honest way. But I, I really thought perhaps I was going to be just one of a, or Sean was going to be just one of another a set of Jimmy's clients just trying to improve. I didn't realize it was going to shift into a sort of, there's a lot he's investing in this client therapist relationship because it, it looks to me like if Sean does well, it says a lot about Jimmy's new process and perhaps it'll work for others. And uh, there's a lot of responsibility in doing that and in playing a vet. But I had no idea that Sean was going to be so involved. And I definitely did not anticipate being able to like do anything funny, funny. And that's just, man, like I think about episode eight where I'm just in the in the art museum with Jessica and with Crystal. <laughs> with Jessica going like, off, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just got to sit and watch back in five. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. But every time I get an opportunity to just kind of be around these comedic geniuses, taking notes, taking notes, <laughs> soaking it in. Everybody's so warm, so kind. But I, I am grateful that I, I kind of get to do a little bit of both in this show. Some where it's pretty just honest drama and another just slapstick humor which is great you can tell when you when you meet actors you can tell when someone's funny or not like and when we we were seeing people for sure and there were a lot of people who just came in they played it very very heavy very straight and they were good and they were good dramatic actors but just talking to them for two minutes before the read you were like yeah you're not funny this is this is you you this is not gonna this isn't gonna work you can do the drama stuff it's not gonna go anywhere and when we met Luke immediately, we we're like, holy shit, look at this guy. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> to blow smoke at everybody, the one thing that Brett and I kind of put out was that this is a show. And, uh, you know, somebody that's in the room, we're over here in the writer's room now, every actor and actress have to be able to bounce back and forth between moments of drama and emotional depth. And sometimes in the very next scene, you know, think about Jessica, you know, when she was doing that scene with a, uh, Jimmy, right off the bat, you know, in the uh, 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 third episode, you know, right off, they have to be able to switch mm -hmm. from silly to dramatic and back to silly uh, and still have it be authentic. And shows like this generally don't work unless everybody can pull it off. And every, you know, so far, I'm very lucky that so far. <laughs> I mean, you know, words to, votes still out on some of the gang, but you know, oh so far. Sorry. Jessica, what was your, like, if you had to pick one moment that felt like the most fun of like the comedic elements, the scenes, um, what would it be? And secondarily, unless this was going to be your answer, what was your favorite thing, your favorite line that you said to Harrison? Because you had some really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I mean, the reason why I wanted to do this uh, initially was I really wanted to work with Jason. I love Jason. <laughs> I wanted to specifically work with Jason and Brad and Neil, who's the, <laughs> and I, and I, and I love like a lot of the people that work at Doozer. Um, <laughs> I just can't think of anybody. Uh, but I, I honestly, really, the, the reason when I signed on to do Gabby, 
they only had a couple episodes. They kind of had a loose idea of who Gabby was, but they wanted to tailor her to whoever was playing her. And uh, they also said, oh, that's, you know, it's a comedy set. We can improvise a bit. And so with my background, that really excited me. So I just kind of took the leap, mostly just kind of trusting Jason and that world that he lives in with the dramatic and the and the comedy. Um, and my, I, I had so many, this was like the best set ever for me. And I felt like I really got the opportunity to fly thanks to the, the set um, that you guys created. And uh, my favorite scene, maybe now that I've looked at it back, is probably that scene with Harrison and um, uh, well, with Paul and Julie. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh. Wendy. And Wendy. And uh, that day was really fun. And I mean, I've had a lot. Like, I love working with Krista. I love working with Jason. And like, Michael makes me laugh. Like, there's, oh, and Ted fucking kills me. Um, and, and, and Luke. But there's, we have, what's great about this show is that there's so many different combos. And I'm really excited about exploring the combination of characters in the next season. But with Harrison, um, there's nothing better than like a grumpy old white guy and like this really <laughs> bubbly, bubbly millennial, like black lady. And so it, I, I like just being annoying to him and it's really <laughs> fun to bother Harrison, but probably that scene with Harrison and, and Wendy. And Do you think just, you bother him in real life or it's only as a character? I think, I think it's only in the character. Like, I don't think I'm confident enough to bother him in real life, but I do <laughs> like having permission to be just as annoying as possible to this like, old white guy and, and get him to do it because they all deserve it. Him, they the all way. deserve it. Mm. All white guys that age deserve it. So I'm really excited that I get to just annoy him and say, you expect me to just drop my panties. That's probably the to answer. Your question. <laughs> it's I got a favorite line for everybody, on. by the way. Really? Well, I mean, um, look, you can't you can't do a panel without saying eat a dick, Pam. First of oh, all, eat a dick, Pam. People's aging on the street TikTok. now. All over yeah. Instagram. It's everywhere, man. I feel it's like crazy. a lot of like women of color fell in love with Ted because a lot of the discourse on TikTok and Twitter were like, get you a man that rides for you like Liz's husband. You really <laughs> activated a demo, Ted, where they're like, I <laughs> love <laughs> that. For me. I can I can also watch that I can watch weird. Lukita making fun of Harrison's hat all day. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> super, super Peace. happy. Yeah. I've been getting a lot of people just talking to me about hats in general. <laughs> brought up a conversation about hats in general. And it was just... You guys all know how that hat originated on our show. Do you guys know Harrison tricked me? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, he 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 brought the hats in, and because he brought the hats into his character, it is now open license for every actor and actress on the show to mock the hats. <laughs> That's funny. Perfect. <laughs> Lakita, um, not so harp on you being the youngest one of the group, but as someone who once was the youngest of most groups, like hold on to that. Um, oh. you'll, uh, when it doesn't, when you're yeah. But um, what, like, do you, were you instantly comfortable um, like with everybody or did it take you, like, what was the point at which you felt like you got to know everybody or like were in, like really in it or were you, are you as, incredibly confident off screen as you appear on screen or like kind of how does that work for you? Uh, I am an anxious ball of anxiety. So thank you for saying that. Um, <laughs> I was, I think instantly comfortable with Jason, not to further gas you up, but when, <laughs> when um, we read for the first time, I, I think that it was really apparent to both of us that we um, had chemistry and I felt really, really comfortable with him acting with him. I hadn't, you know, fully had a conversation with you, but uh, feeling the space that an actor will give you over a screen, if you can find like that intimacy, then I knew that I was going to be comfortable with him um, in the day-to-day -day on set. But then the first week I was freaking out. I was not <laughs> like, I was not keeping my cool. I, I I remember we were shooting in the house in, in Pasadena and I, I told Jason at one point, I was like, dude, this is crazy. I'm freaking out. And he's like, <laughs> you don't need to be like best friends with everybody right away. Like you're here to work. Let's do our job. I'm here to support you. 
you're doing amazing. And he would like literally just cheer me on at the end of every scene and really quickly, I mean, because everybody's so warm, we all got really comfortable. But yeah, I was freaking out for the first little bit. It was just, yeah. <laughs> uh, for someone with anxiety, I'd like to say, Lukita is the most self-assured person I've ever met. I <laughs> yeah. have oh. been at parties with Lukita where she is just so casually talking to the most famous people with <laughs> like no sweat, just like, oh, I do this. What are you up to? What are you up to? And I, I'm like in awe of Lukita. I have to say, it took me took me 20 years to even pretend to be as comfortable as Lukita, <laughs> maybe mm. pretending, but it's really, it's a, it's an amazing thing to witness. It's a really, it's a really important thing when you're acting, right? This is why I think Lukita and Luke and I mean, everybody is so special, but being, being the youngest of the, of the crop, there is like a real desire when the camera is pointed at you to show off. Like you think that's what you're yeah. supposed to do. Like it's it, now's your moment. The camera's pointed at you, and both of them just like resist any of that. Like trying to manufacture, or trying to impress you, and are just honest and real and funny and listening. And it, I learned a ton from everybody on the show, especially Bill. Especially Bill. Most especially, especially Bill. 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 Bring it on. Bill. 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 Um, <laughs> I wanted to kind of ask everybody to, to like compare or contrast themselves like to their characters or like who they most, maybe which character they most connect with, but maybe Michael, I'll start with you. Cause I feel like your character has the potential for people to assume that that's exactly how you're going to be in real life, just because it seems so natural and funny and like um, people might expect you to be like ripping off zingers, uh, left and right, but how, how closely, uh, does that character mirror yourself? Um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess kind of, he's so, he's like so bubbly and, and, uh, front footed. And I, and I guess I am, I am front footed and bubbly to an extent, but I also, I also like battle anxiety. I'm not somebody to like dive head first into, uh, social situations like he is, I would never join um, a, a, a cornhole tournament with a bunch of strange <laughs> the way that <laughs> I would never have the guts to do something like that. But um, but I guess where I I related to him, and and this was something I didn't quite know was going to happen. And and they're so amazing. The writers are so amazing at tailoring the characters to us. But when I first read this, I got the first script, first episode, which I'm not really in. I, I appear pumping mm -hmm. gas brilliantly in the first episode. Beautifully. Oh, you really up. beautiful. You up your moment. Oh, I would have seen that was. Really good. <laughs> Moving. <laughs> Especially at the table read. Yes, no. I know. <laughs> But I don't really get to, uh, you know, do, do anything until. So, but but I, but my audition scenes were all from the second episode, and so I was like, mm -hmm. how does this guy fit into this world? And I knew somebody who was walking around saying everything goes my way in this world must be covering up for something. And so I knew something was going to be coming down the pike, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. And then when it did, when this 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 guy, this sort of fragile guy that covers, I, I was like, this is the guy I understand. I understand this person who. Um, who leads with this uh, confidence and 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 sort of false sense of joy, um, but it wasn't until that guy came along that I was like, oh, now I'm now I feel like I'm really really him. But that's also, you know, Lukita was talking about the generosity of Jason on set. This is a whole bunch of really generous collaborators, and it started in the table read when we read the first episode and all I had to do was pump gas. And I thought, well, I'm sitting here with everybody. I have a name tag and I'm not say I'm not even, I, I have nothing to say. What am I going to do? You know, like they're going to think, eh, who is this guy? What is he doing up there sitting with all these people? And then Bill, Bill gave me this incredible introduction. He said, oh, and here's the, oh, wait, 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 wait. And he stopped the thing. Yeah. He was like, like this is a guy he's in the show and he doesn't even have any lines but here he is and he's pumping gas and he go and then he <laughs> i got to get this huge really the biggest laugh of the day <laughs> <laughs> i got to walk Excuse away and, like, <laughs> and that was like that, that like that kind of generosity it was another day when when jason and i had a whole like four six four four or five hours stuck in a car with harrison 
and we just we just had him and we could ask him anything and he yeah. would <laughs> that, it, it was like he we got a lot of dish that night and when it was over I was sort of sad that it was over it was like you know the middle of the night I was like oh, I don't want to go home now and I was like I want to keep talking and and I said to to Jason I said that was really great that was so fun and Jason said he go, he looks at me and with this like sweet twinkle and goes aren't we lucky and like <laughs> To hear someone like him, who is such a, you know, like, you know, star, say, like, realize the same thing that I realized, which is like, you get it, you get four and a, four and a half hours in a car with Harrison Ford, and you get to take advantage of that, and he's cool about it. That's really lucky. You're really, you're really lucky. And he, and he recognized that, and that kind of generosity. I mean, that, that happened every day on the show. We have a really lucky group. And I would like to say it does start. This is actually not to gas you up, Bill. It does start with Bill. Like to to get the phone call from Bill saying, hey, I'd like to make a show together is about as dreamy as it gets. And it, it the whole thing was permeated by like it's it's um it's a bunch of nice people around here. And I think you feel that all the way down. Bill has the no asshole policy. And I think yeah, that it does. It's a really important, it's a really important thing. Um, it's too nice and now I'm uncomfortable so the joke doesn't work anymore. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna answer really quick. So last time I'm gonna speak, because I promised her I would, I'm gonna answer as Krista. Oh. And because she wanted to say, that she texted me on the phone that uh, she doesn't always like it that uh, Bill steals stuff from my actual life. Like she's, yesterday was outside polishing rocks because that's what she does with her time. <laughs> and she doesn't want anybody to think that she we wrote it as a character and then she decided to do it. She's like, I've been doing it first and then you stole it and it made her mad. <laughs> but she uh, uh, wanted to talk about uh, how lovely the whole cast is, uh, how welcoming they are to her and how insecure she was because Brett and I were asking her to do something. Uh, usually she's just kind of an acerbic, edgy, you know, comedic, snarky uh, 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 character. And she was so nervous about going into scenes with all these people and having to be somewhat human and emotional beneath it all. But she said everybody was so supportive. She talked about the day that she and Jason were yelling at each other across balconies, you know, and, uh, uh, and that she and Jessica, the first time they squared off and how supportive Jessica was. So she just wanted to put out a big thank you to all the actors and actresses. There we go. We love you, Ask Krista. Krista Miller. And then she said yeah. she loves her husband. She did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say thank you. Well, before we run out of time, I do want to ask whatever I can about season two. I guess first, who here knows? Obviously, there's a few that we know know what happens. But cast, do you guys know anything about what happens in season two yet? I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the board. I saw the board. I saw the board. I saw the whiteboard. I saw what they were doing. I know everything. What is I, uh, a word to describe uh, what we can expect? I can or tell you how we pitched the show. We pitched uh, that the first year is about grief and the second year is about forgiveness. And I won't say what the third year is about. Wow. And it is a uh, very, very cool, big surprises in the very first one. And uh, 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 part of the fun for Brett and me and the other writers and, and, and Jason, because he's in on, you know, breaking the stories and all that stuff is when we, we this year, because we know all, all these folks and, and we have a shorthand, part of the fun will be getting them scripts before we start talking to them about where their arcs are going and talking to them about what they're doing. And uh, uh you know, and then you just get to sit back and watch them elevate the stuff and uh, and then take credit for all the things they do on their own that you had nothing to do with. That's the most fun part of this job. And then the other thing okay. we got to try, we got to try and con Brett into being in the show sometime. We haven't yeah, had yeah, come on. Come on. Please, man. I think I saw the casting directors gave an interview too where they said that was one of their goals was to get... Um, well, they need to call me because I haven't heard from them in weeks. Uh -oh. <laughs> By the way, I mean that out there, right, not, like how yeah. the Trump, you know, uh, White House, they had to put stuff in the press so that he would read it. Yep. And, then do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Brett, you'll you'll read, right? If we if we have something that we think you might be OK for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll read. I'll read. I'll do. 
<laughs> I'll read with the casting directors, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the assistant. It'd be hilarious. Look, we'll we'll what see you it if it's written. good. Yeah, if it's yeah, good, yeah. if it's good, we'll all see it. If it's not, there's no skin off your back because it'll never get to us. <laughs> Absolutely fine with me. That's how it should be. <laughs> I'm ever so humble. Does anyone have anything that they're desperate to do in season two? Even, like whether it's like a little, I don't know, are we going to like Luke, maybe it's like get behind the wheel of the food truck um, or <laughs> something like that. Anyone yeah, have? I'm glad you asked two things right off the bat. And I actually haven't told the writers this, but the first is more cooking because I freaking love it and I've been working. The second is more fighting. I don't know what capacity, but I've never done more action in my life than the Apple TV plus comedy. <laughs> and let me tell you, it was riveting. <laughs> Also, I am now, <laughs> I've been for the past like six months training Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so I can look less trash in the event that y'all have that stuff written. Yeah. Yeah. You have a fight scene. This is great news. You have a fight scene early I'm ready. in MMA. Bill, no and spoilers. Tell you with who. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> not telling me with who? Spoiler I, alert. Off, I, I will tell you, I'll tell you off person. air. Off air. Great. We need to have yeah. a Zoom. We need, we actually do need to have like a company. Zoom. We need a work Zoom, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, just give us a work Zoom. Mm. No, gotta, no response. You gotta, you gotta do that. We gotta, gotta do that in part. We gotta do Hero, that in it was, it was, it's never been more quiet. It's never been more quiet than when I asked for like a State of the Union work Zoom for all the actors. You just see a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. I don't, even, I don't even know why that would be. Difficult, but that you're gonna would, ask Brett. You're gonna ask Brett. Not only are we gonna do that, but uh, I've been making a list of things uh, that we're gonna talk to the. It's gonna, it's gonna be such a good work Zoom before we start of all sorts <laughs> of good things. I'm just I'm prepping. Great. I'm prepping. Well, One I gonna be here, about cursing too much, but that has nothing to do with this thing. We <laughs> actually did curse a lot. HR is gonna pop into the Zoom. Really. My uh, my favorite review of the show was from a religious website that said it should be called swearing. <laughs> but, uh, oh my god! I'm <laughs> yeah. I but can't get my dad. To watch. My dad won't watch because <laughs> the language is too bad. So I'm oh, sorry, Ted. So my sister's a pastor and I don't know, I don't know how she's doing it. I'm just like, yo, you really watched it? She's like, yeah. I'm like, thank you. I love you. Did you guys get, <laughs> you guys get the call from your, you know, it's my mom call that anytime it starts with, does it have to be? And I'm like, I got it. <laughs> no. Do Jessica and Lukita have to talk about the sex? Like mom. You have to. Go. You have to. Oh, the have sex. To. <laughs> the sex. <laughs> <laughs> we are okay we've gone over our time so i think leaving it at the sex is probably <laughs> <laughs> exactly the tone that apple tv plus yeah. um, was hoping for out of this out of this panel <laughs> That's uh, ted take his home oh, oh look at that how good is life? Little shit right Ted, you were yeah. full of surprises, man. Ted, I got I'm coming, uh, Ted, I'm coming over to him with you and Gigi. <laughs> all of Gigi this, got home. all of this is so funny. Okay. Uh, you hey, we, we, ship in a glass bottle. We always do like to yeah. end, and I've seen these guys and, and, and women doing it on their own with, there's so much to watch out there. There's a landscape right now that there's amazing shows that I haven't seen or even heard of. And when I find them, I'm like, oh my God, there's so much TV on that's really good. Uh, I think we're all so grateful that people are watching this show and digging it and talking about it. And so a uh, big thank you to you and big thank you to everybody that's uh, uh, watched the show. It's tough to find an audience nowadays. So we're really grateful for it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us.